chosen to test this station's destructive power on your home planet of Orbit. What? Then name the system Orbit. Loki religions and ancient weapons are no match for a good flight. Sparks are coming up on Alderaan. You may fire when ready. <laughs> From the Alderaan Explosion, Explosion Network's official countdown to Star Wars Episode 9, The Rise of Skywalker. It's 35 days until release. My name's Dylan Blight, your Jedi Master, and joining me, my Padawans, Kira Martian. Hey, it's me, the Padawan. Well, we, we um, last week we proved you on, you might be a Padawan in disguise. Did we? Yeah, yeah we did. Why? Ashley had to correct oh. you on something. Oh, yeah, I was forgetting heaps of things. It's fine. It happens. Uh, get over it. Also here, out to help. Hey, Dylan. Excited to be here to talk about Ewoks dying. I was going to be happy because I thought you were just going to say Ewoks, but then you had the... <laughs> comma, dying. <laughs> yeah, yeah, dying. Mm. It's like, kind of messed that one up, but that's fine. Um, so yeah, this week on the show, we are talking about the last of the original trilogy, Return of the Jedi. So let's get into it. As always, Ash, when yep. was the last time you watched this? How do you feel about it now compared to then? I mean, again, it was probably two years ago when we did this show. Um, I don't, it's fine. I don't, I don't love it. I don't hate it. I mean, it's, it's good overall, but uh, it, I don't know. It just didn't capture my interest this time. I would, whether it was just because we were doing the deadline or not, but uh, I know, yeah. It is good. Obviously, there's cool moments, the Endor stuff, the final battle with the Emperor. This is like the first time we see the Emperor like proper, like in person as well, which will probably yep. be relevant coming with Nine. Um, there's a lot relevant in this movie. Yeah, there's a lot relevant, the potentially relevant, <laughs> yeah. uh, which makes sense because it, it, again, it's going to be echoed in Nine. Probably, it's going to be a remake of this kind of. I don't think it's going to be a remake of this. It'll it's be just using li- links, but yeah, yeah links because it's a sequel to a movie. So there are and links. man, that song at the start of the f- in Jabba's palace, bad. Somebody oh, it's so who who sat down and was like, you know what, this this enhances the viewing experience. <laughs> who did that? Because they're on. Some I can tell you who crap. it was. It was George Lucas. <laughs> <laughs> There's no if, buts, or who about it. We know who it was. <laughs> yeah, but uh, s- somebody had to have been able to stop him, right? Right. No, that's that's literally the thing. Kieran, when was the last time you watched this, and how do you feel about it with this most recent rewatch? Um, I feel really good. Actually, I feel better. I think I enjoy this more with. You know, having watched more Star Wars content and reading more Star Wars content and even just the analysis of the trailer for Rise of Skywalker has made me more interested and more excited about this movie in itself. So I think retrospectively, this is like probably the best viewing I've ever had. I feel like I've seen Return of the Jedi fairly recently because for some reason it always seems to be the one that's on random like free-to-air TV whenever like... They're doing some random Star Wars showing or whatever. So really, it's always a New Hope that I always see on. Oh, really? I always see Return, and it's just there, and I'm like, okay. Um, I think the only thing I always think this movie's really long, even though it isn't. It feels really long. Like the first act feels so slow, and I don't the rescue. Yeah, like the whole rescue at Jabba's palace just feels really slow. I don't, I don't well, it it's always funny because it's like that all, feel, <laughs> that all feels like its own sort of episode thing that's happening. And then they go to like, and now we've got to finish off the tri- like this, this, these movies somehow. And we're going to get to the Emperor and all this sort of stuff. But they're like, fuck, before we get there, we have to rescue Han. So <laughs> like they do the opening part, of course. Yeah. Um, let's jump into my notes. <clears throat> don't you so, want to give your overall feeling of I was going to say yeah go for it fucking oh, Dylan. Um, how do you feel when was the last time you watched it Fuck. I watched it like I think I watched it like a year ago or something like that probably um, I don't I feel good about it I enjoy watching it every time 
I don't want to spoil. I don't want to give away too much because then I'll spoil my placing. I feel if I. Well, I think we all anybody who listens. I to think I remember your you, know. you from last time, so I think I remember where this is going to get placed. But you know, dun, carry dun, on. Dun. Uh, no, it's, so it's go a, back and listen very... to that episode, and then you can listen to the rest of this episode. Just, <laughs> just go spoil yourself. Go back there if you want to. Yeah, if the you want heart to. of a hero, the courage of a rebel. <laughs> The strength of a leader. The loyalty of comrades. The power of the force. Uh, so I started my notes with just by writing down the quote of, I'm out of it for a little while and everyone gets delusions of grandeur, which is just my, it makes me laugh every single time because of just the delivery. Um, from Han when he's saying the line after he gets rescued and it's like Chewie's obviously like saying to him in Kashyyyk he's just been like yeah, Luke's gonna come he's a Jedi now he'll save us all and Han's like Jedi uh, delusions of grandeur <laughs> I, I <laughs> will been, say he's been out of it for a year <laughs> compared to your comments last week about Mr. Han Solo I love he's Han good in this movie, movie. I this love movie Han in this movie he's fantastic he had a lot of time like to think in, in that Empire. carbonite so well, what? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't know, you know if you can think of that. When you like, have a, a disability question, for a little while, it puts changes perspective on everything. <laughs> what? Because he's what like blind, isn't he, at the start of the film? You can't see anything. Oh, okay. Yeah. Do you reckon they're gonna a lot do better? You, do you reckon they're gonna fix that process for the Mandalorian? Well, or, I, well. I, they'll probably refine it. I don't know if they'll cover that as a factoid necessary for the viewing experience, but Maybe. Maybe. Um, <laughs> I Yeah, no, I, I enjoy Han a lot more in this movie. I find him funny. Um, he's still the scoundrel or whatever that... I, to me, he's still the scoundrel in this. He just doesn't come across as, as big of an asshole, which, as we discussed last week, it was like, oh, but being an asshole is part of being a scoundrel. But I'm like, yeah, but like, th- there's a line that I prefer him just to... Where I'm like, eh, you're no fun anymore. And then this, I feel like he gets his smart-ass remarks and like all this sort of stuff that comes with the scoundrelness, but at the same time, he's not being like super somewhat arsehole slash sleazy in this. Like to kind of skip ahead. I like, lo- I think there's like a moment of growth that I really like for Han at the end where, uh, when he's layers out and layers, uh, just being told Luke's like, you know, you're my sister. I got to go face Star Vader. He's our father, all this stuff. And Leia of course is like in shock and all this stuff. And then Han comes out and then does his whole like sort of, Jealousy spits it for a speck and he's like, oh, but you'll tell Luke about it, would you? And he goes to talk, turn away and he's like, whatever then, like puts his hand up, but then he like stops in his tracks and he literally like turns around and he walks back up to Leia and then he's like, I'm sorry. And then she turns around, like talks to him and then they they embrace and all that sort of stuff. So I, I always take that as like a moment of growth. For, like that shows a big difference for Han. Like he's literally like, he does his usual, he's like, well, whatever, screw you. Then goes to walk away. But then he's like, no, actually I really like this girl. <laughs> I'm going to turn back around and apologize and um, continue there. Whereas uh, in Empire, it's all the like, as I was saying last week, the, you know, daughter, princess, you love that I'm a scoundrel, all this stuff. Like apologizing doesn't seem natural to him, but it, yet he is. So I think that's the, as much as uh, Harrison Ford always says that Han Solo got the least growth in the third film, which is true out of the, the main three. Well, to be fair, the other two are dealing with family revelations and <laughs> whatever else. I, st- I still think that you can tell he's grown somewhat like as a person, especially when it comes with interacting with, Layer. Yeah. I can't um, remember if we discussed this before. Is everybody working in tandem or did Leia infiltrate it like by herself? I think they have they have no idea that Luke's gonna do what Luke's doing. I think Luke but he is sent independent C3PO and R2 to us. But uh, mm. What do you though? How what wait, Luke sent R2 D2 and C three PO? Yep. Really? I would have thought R2D2 shows a message of Luke. <laughs> well, that's true. That's very it's, true. It's one big plan that they all put together, in, as far as I'm aware. I'm pretty sure that, and you know, I mentioned last week how they're rebooting the Star Wars comic and it's going to take place place between episodes five and six now. 
I, f- I feel like towards the end of that comic run, obviously, uh, setting up the last storyline of that comic series would have to be like going over, like setting up the plan and whatever else here, um, for sure. Even though they have briefly covered it in like a short story before, <clears throat> but it's like they send Lando to infiltrate first, then they send C three C- C- PO and R two to come in. And then, if that fails, they send in Leia with Chewie. And then, if that fails, it's like their trump card is leave Luke to last, kind of thing, you know? One, it's one after another. If they manage to just send C three PO in and then play the message and then scare Jabba out of just the idea of Luke coming, then it would have been like they would have been like happy with that. But they had like a structure. I feel they're like this and then this and then this. Does anybody get the feeling that, like, when? Leia walks in and gets caught. She's like very much. It almost feels like they were really waiting for a surprise party for somebody else. Like just the way they're hiding and everything is always like, this feels weird. Like, okay. It's like, there's just like that moment. It's similar to a surprise party where the lights go up and ah, we're all here, dickhead. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't come off as, evil or sinister in any way it just comes off as kind of like ha gotcha my head my head canon for that has always been that boba fett is the one who was like i don't trust that person i don't know who they are i think we should watch han or something like that because i'm like th- that's the only way i believe because he- he's there and it's weird how they're all like cramped into a corner together kind of but <laughs> gotta hide somehow i guess in java's palace uh Next thing I write down, though, is Luke's entrance doesn't get boring. And that's because I like I always remember the first time watching this movie. It was like Luke comes in. It's like, what a fucking badass. You know, like the last time we left him, this dude got his hand cut off. You And then you watch this movie and it's like Jedi, Ma- Jedi Master Luke Skywalker, blah, blah, blah. Like in the in the crawl and whatever else. And then in comes Luke with the shadowy figure and then force chokes some dudes out and then. There's still Heads a level him. of uncertainty to him, though. Like, he doesn't have that pure confidence. Like, he doesn't have the... When Obi-Wan... When you watch Obi-Wan in, say, Clone Wars, or even throughout the prequel movies, doing things, even when he's in a situation he did not plan to be in, he has this level of just playful um, confidence that is just about him and the way he deals with it. Whereas Luke, I feel like there are moments like getting dropped to the Rancor where I, I feel like Luke's still kind of like, holy fuck, what the fuck am I doing? Like, there's not, I don't know, it almost feels like the confidence is played up a little bit for Luke, not there being I think, natural. I think he's he's playing it up because he wants to, to act like the yeah. Jedi he thinks he is. and in reality, in reality, he's not really, but it also works for the audience, especially back when this originally released, I guess it's like... And he comes with the, it, 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 just the way he walks, the way he talks, you know, it's, it's like, this is a different Luke than we have seen before. Uh, talking about the Rancor, I wrote down, I love the crying Rancor trainer, because trainer, I always find it funny how they literally cut to a shot of this person crying, and you, you, you're so, it's like, the Rancor's trainer is just like, oh, lost my pet! <laughs> like, it's, <laughs> I mean, every it, time I say I'm like, what a weird thing to include in the movie. <laughs> I mean, it's realistic. Do you think the uh, <laughs> the zookeepers it when they shot no, her it's up? No, up- I guess. But I, I don't mean- think the zookeepers are going to drop somebody into the lion pit and be like, "Fight my lion." I love how it looks like a caveman person as well. They got no top on. I'm like, what are they doing to this wrinkle? Um, R 2s <laughs> smart ass attitude is underappreciated a lot, and I wrote down the quote quote from c-3po where he's like bumps into r2 and he's like what are you doing here r2 and then you just hear r2 go beep, beep, and then c-3po goes yes i can see you're serving drinks i always find it fun. like you never hear what oh, obviously that's like how the jokes work I've you always... never have it translated but it's always so funny how you can just tell that whatever r2 is saying is like the most smart ass like i just picture r2 being like I'm serving drinks it's like such a fucking smart ass robot <laughs> i just i would some i always think whenever i watch uh, Star Wars in any form, like whenever I watch a movie or even Clone Wars, whenever there's a part with R2, I'm always like, I really wish there was like a dubbed over version of this where they replace the beeps with somebody talking. 
Yeah. Like some like either like almost like even like a Deadpool style of like voice or something to it where he's just talking shit. Like there's so many times where characters are like R2 do something already or like call back to like uh, Revenge of the Sith where he's trying to fix everything and deal with super battle droids at the same time and Obi-Wan's just like, R2, what the hell are you doing? I just feel like his responses there would be very quippy and very funny and just overall, I think it'd be really fun to watch. But yeah, I always time, picture yeah. in those moments where he's like, there's shooting happening everywhere and he's trying to get their files. It's like, hurry up, I do. I just picture him being like, fucking coming, just shut the fuck up. I'm coming, just can you not see? <laughs> <laughs> like, just give me, give me a fucking second. Just, I'm yeah, dealing with a crisis yeah. here. Yeah, so let me ch- chill out for a second, everyone. Jesus. Uh, yeah, so I always find that funny. Uh, next thing I had down is fucking hilarious how Boba Fett goes down. What a nub nub. Where are we at the return of Boba Fett thoughts these days? Because obviously I think every, every year it's like, well, there was the height of Boba Fett returning rumor was like Force Awakens type era where um, Josh Trank was supposedly going to do that Boba Fett movie. And then wasn't, that got cancelled, obviously. Wasn't no, it wasn't James Mangold? Oh, James Mangold. You're right. Yeah. Sorry. James Mangold um, was going to do that one. And then nothing happened with that. Uh, but they basically confirmed it. Well, Solo it killed disappeared. it. Disappeared. Uh, well, Solo killed it, true. Arguably. Uh, and that's the, no, I think that is pretty factual. Solo did, like, and not because it's a bad movie, but it just underperformed for Disney's expectations. And I think that obviously caused them to slow down on uh, spin off films, which is why Obi Wan. Which uh, Ewan McGregor recently on some late night show admitted that it was a movie. They were making a movie years and years and years ago around the Force Awakens era time they got, where they started like really going ham on putting a lot of these productions in the work. Uh, they were, that's when they started originally having the talks about the Obi-Wan movie. And then that's why he's had to lie for so many years about it. Cause it's like, he, he knew they were doing something. He just didn't know when it was actually going to happen. And he said years and years and years back that he agreed to do it. And then obviously because of solo, they decided movies isn't the, probably the way to go for spin-off Star Wars material, at least for the uh, foreseeable future at the moment. And that's why Obi-Wan has now, they've taken that script and they're extending it into a, uh, series so they could possibly if they still if they had written anything for a boba fett thing which we don't know if they'd actually started writing anything or even if they had like a story outline of what it was going to be and we never had confirmation if it was supposed to actually be about him like surviving the silent pit or anything like that uh but if they did have something they could extend it to a series uh but how do we how do we feel about these days because every time i watch him go down i'm like Fuck! Fuck! He goes out like a loser. It is hilarious. Han just literally, Han literally just swings around like what, <laughs> like, and then kills him basically. <laughs> and off he flies. I mean, the, it's the some of the best people just accidentally get killed. So <laughs> it's hilarious. Uh, but I, I, I'm not super against him surviving the Sarlacc pit because it's like the whole thing of the the Sarlacc is it's like it's something that's supposed like it's supposed to slowly they they mention it in the movie it's like slowly digest you over x amount of years so it's not like even if he went into it like if he dropped in you're not going to die instantly and they could do some weird storyline where he quick fixes his jetpack and he manages to like burst out like Shortly after Luke and everyone leaves, well, kind I mean, of thing. if like, he's got years, he's got plenty of time to. Yeah, so I, I, I don't think the I'm not against him armor, surviving. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I know George Lucas at, at one point thought said that in his mind he survived the Sarlacc pit. So, yeah, I desperately hope that he's not in the Mandalorian at some point because I, yeah, it, I it'll be him. super yeah. tempting for them to do. Well, John Favreau wanted that show to be about. Boba Fett. That's that's apparently how he pitched it. He's like, oh, I want to do a show about Boba Fett, and they said, I mean, it could no. be about Boba Fett. Yeah, we still don't know the dude's name, but I would find it very weird if like Pedro Pascal is playing Boba Fett, and I also think having that character suddenly revealed as Boba Fett would ruin that character. Like, I, I it's like here's a new character, the first live action Star Wars show is a spin off. Starring a brand new character, all these brand new supporting characters, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And then they reveal at the last seconds that it's actually Boba Fett being played by Pedro Pascal. Nah. It would and also, he's way too young. It would also rip out any potential growth for that character in that moment. Because if you name that character, say, as we speculated last week, 
if you open the door at the end of the series and his character name is given and, you know, that's how the series one ends, you then have season two to explore who he is as a character and who and his past and everything like that. As soon as you go, oh, I know it's you, Boba Fett. It's like, yeah. oh, we know you. We know everything already. It's and yeah, cool. That's like the Mandalorian. Meh, is he though? <laughs> He's not really. I I I have a special place of just disdain for Boba Fett, and I think it's just because how I've consumed content for Star Wars that. I, I just think he's really overrated. Like, everybody loves him, but he does fucking nothing. Even watching Clone Wars, where you see him as a kid, you're like, you're just a fucking snotty-nosed brat. Like, you are just annoying as shit. Like, I don't... You just... He's just not a good character. Which is sad, because, you know, there is the elements of, you could have been a good character. You could have been well, interesting. He doesn't, and, he doesn't have the opportunity to do anything interesting, so... Exactly. Exactly. Like, and there's, there's a lot of, I think... In terms of general character development, apart from the select few, overall, the original Star Wars were fucking terrible at any kind of character development. Like, it, it just just from just from a pure writing standpoint, and I just think that shows, for the time, George Lucas's writing capabilities of a script of script and actually writing the story wasn't that great. Like wasn't well, he, that he also was was never com- he was swinging around and changing his mind about things constantly and never sticking down to like uh, a certain story. Like at at one point in time when he was originally planning his Star Wars movies as three separate trilogies, where he was going to do this one, he was going to do the prequels, and then he was going to do the the sequel trilogy. When he was doing that, and then he changed his mind at some point and said, no, nah, I'll just stick to doing a prequel trilogy and that's it. I don't want to do a sequel to this one. But when he was planning on doing 12 movies originally, apparently he was going to have Boba Fett actually be the lead villain of this. And he wasn't going to reveal the Emperor until episode 12. That's how fuck? he was. Or- <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> that's how he was Holy originally. Holy balls. Yeah. <clears throat> so he also regrets. Uh, he's on record in interviews and whatever, also saying he regrets how Boba Fett dies in this because he never realized uh, <laughs> how popular the character would be. And he's like, if I knew, if I knew it was going to be so popular, I would have made sure he had a a lot more interesting death. <laughs> like, <laughs> but he never knew. <laughs> it is always funny. Go remember the character comes from the freaking star uh, Christmas holiday special, so where he's uh, riding on whatever creature with the the weapon. Um, that's making it sharp in the Mandalorian. But this is a good point. I was looking for a point to put this in. I didn't. I, I was like, I had this story last night, as of recording, as of recording now. Last night I had a dream. This was my legit dream. Cool. <laughs> I can't remember. I can't remember it all because of you know, like dr- dreams and whatever else. But I dreamed an episode of the Mandalorian. Basically, is what I can gather. And in my episode, Cad Bane teamed up with the Mandalorian. <laughs> <laughs> Who played Cad and, and also the, 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 other, the other funny thing about this dream though was it wasn't like I was just dreaming the episode like I was like inside the camera I was like dreaming it where it was like I was in like a lounge room watching it and I was talking to people. I don't know who was there, but there was people there. And then when K- Cad Bane showed uh, up on the screen, I'm, I stood up and I like cheered and everyone like looked at me. And then I like, just remember in the dream, I went, it's Cad Bane, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I don't know if I have foresight or for whatever reason my brain last night was like I think you just got wishful thinking there buddy I think it was just Cad Bane (laughs) (laughs) the best bounty hunter in Star Wars Uh, is Mandalorian (laughs) I don't know why I was thinking about it because the the last thing I did before bed last night was I was reading a Star Wars book but I was reading the new Resistance Reborn book um, which doesn't have Cad Bane in it, but then I suddenly start dreaming about Cad Bane. So I don't know how that works, but anyway, <clears throat> funny little tidbit. Uh, I, 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 my last note on this is I still think we'll see Boba Fett return because he still s- sells merchand- merchandise like hot so cakes. much merchandise. Um, and as much as like the Mandalorian, they they may be like it's sort of the same or whatever, but like for for whatever reason, people really like he Boba doesn't Fett. have a like, jetpack. The, the, yeah, it's like well, it's like the green armor that Boba Fett has. He doesn't have a like, missile that fires like straight up. <laughs> we don't know. Can I Maybe say out of out of all of the Mandalorian armor we have seen so far to date, Boba Fett's is the worst looking armor. 
like just I just hate it. I hate the color scheme for it. I'm like, well, I mean, is. <clears throat> mine is my favorite is the Sabine from Rebels because she like spray paints hers, customizes it, and shit like that. Yeah. So I think that's pretty cool. But <laughs> in my yeah, opinion, but. no, I think there's a lot of others. Like I even like the um, the Darth Maul versions of the Mandalorian armor when um, Maul is um, uh, death- ruling. No, yeah, do I, Death, Death Watch or whatever. The Death what Watch ones over. where he's got, yeah. where they have like his colors. I think they look really cool. But yeah, just Boba Fett is just, he goes out like the chump he was. And then yeah. to add insult to injury, he has like a little scream or whatever. And it's ah! like, yeah, it's not good. Just, <laughs> and off he just, falls. Oh boy, oh boy. Tumbles to his death. <laughs> um, Next thing I wrote down is, there's a lot to cover still between episodes 5 and 6, like Luke's training. He obviously doesn't return to Yoda till this movie, but whatever he goes through between the, this, the two films lets him grow in strength a lot. And then he makes a lightsaber, of course, which is a deleted scene you can see on the Blu-ray, uh, but then that could be put into one of the upcoming comics as well. Because I, I think I was just thinking, like, when he returns to Dagobah and he's, like, talking to Yoda, I think I was paying a bit more close attention to the that scene now with the recent announcement about like the, the comic being set between two movies where I was like, what does he say? Like, c- could they try and twist it and have it? So he returns to Yoda, like in the comic, but then he's like s- saying it there. And he's like, asks obviously about if Vader's his father and then Yoda confirms it. it. It definitely feels like he's never gone back to Dagobah until this movie. Like, so th- then it does mean that in the comic, when they're trying to explain what's happened in the year between you really do have to make that Luke's strength and confidence and force powers and whatever. That is all just him slowly sort of teaching himself a la like Ray, I guess, like self-discovery. I don't think he's self-taught. You think he's going to bump he... into, well, I guess obi What you could say that Obi-Wan's helping him. And I think him either on the way Obi-Wan. Yoda gave him some audio tapes. Maybe. Yeah. Either, you know, um, Obi-Wan, I think he could find another Jedi temple. I think that's um, a given. Yeah, that and could be. That's through the Jedi thing, temple. Yeah. Maybe it brings in the uh, three people of the Force to kind of come in and train him, or, um, or you know, you hook your boy Qui Gon up, and he's like, mm. "Yo, homie, let's get to the advanced shit. Let's sit back, relax, <laughs> light up a few of these uh, space sticks, and uh, let me teach you how teach you how it's done." I mean. It's possible, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes back to the, the deleted scene from the Yoda conversation. We've never seen this movie. Smoke death sticks with <laughs> Qui Gon. You did. <laughs> <laughs> Look, Qui Gon was the hippie of the Jedi Order. Man, he he knew where the good stuff was. This is true. Uh, next, thing I write down is this movie has so many big reveals. Leia's your sister. Bam. Next scene, <laughs> like. <laughs> it's 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 always weird to me how and once again this I, I feel like this comes back to kind of how I felt about the start of um Empire where it's like you know Obi-Wan shows up as a force ghost so so early in that movie which as I was saying when that happened I was like this wouldn't happen like this these days they'd save that as like a much bigger reveal and in this movie they do like the whole like how far are we in? Like, it's literally after 20 minutes, I guess, the whole Jabba Power stuff. And then he, he pops back over the Dagobah, speaks to Yoda. Lay's your sister. Next scene. They literally just cut to another scene. Like, I, I, it's just one of those things where I feel like if this movie was made today, like, that that scene would be, like, drawn out, much more epic music, you know, close-ups, like, you know, like, sunsets, like, give be, the audience lots of time to, like, sink like, it yeah. in. Yeah. It'd there be would like be, the Jon Snow parent reveal from Game of Thrones. It'd just be a lot more epic, like the way it'd be edited and everything. But it's just like, Lay's your sister. Yeah, all right. Oh, next scene. Like, it, but it, it would really edited, does not linger. <laughs> it'd be edited in a way that Leia is also somehow finding out at the exact same moment. Yeah, probably. Yeah. <laughs> somehow. That, or they'll try and movies. misdirect you at first. Like, someone you know is your sibling. Yeah, drag it, it out. Han? Yeah, that, but there's another thing with the movie. They it, they could have like, these days. I feel like it would have been like there's another Yoda dies, never gets to say who. You know, <laughs> Luke never realizes who it is. But in this movie, they're like, there's another, and Luke's like, it's Leia, isn't it? Everyone's like, yeah, good job. But <laughs> like, I knew as soon as I kissed her. Yeah, I knew. I, yeah, I knew as soon as the lips touched mine. Eh, what? Um, 
This is yes, the movie that set up the incest thing that has just per- perpetrated throughout entertainment. So we we wouldn't have Game of Thrones without Star Wars, is what you're yeah. saying. Yep. Yeah, this kiss. This kiss. Um, next thing I write down, quote, many Bothans died to bring us this information. Battlefront 2's campaign covers a lot of the Endor setup, including how it was, of course, a trap. And that's that's the one thing as a much trap. as I thought the, uh, the uh, Battlefront 2 campaign was c- kind of meh for the most part like i i did did enjoy how that the the story in, in in that game's campaign does sort of extrapolate on like the trap and everything here where it's basically like um the the rebels intercept this information from the bothans sure but then at the same time that the empire intercepts that they're intercepting that information so they're aware of it and instead of then like stopping the ship that's got that information or even chasing it a la like episode four basically they literally like let it go um and then literally the first mission in uh i can't remember how it plays out now exactly but the first mission in battlefront 2 is like you purposely sabotaging the attempt of the the empire uh the rebels like letting these people know or something along those lines so it, it all plays out so the the Emperor lets it all happen, and then he hides his ship on the opposite side of the Endor moon, and blah, 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 all this sort of stuff, you know, so, but I always find it weird, like, and every time I hear the line, it also just always makes me think of Rogue One, because when Rogue One was coming out, everyone kept posting, many Bothans died for this, and it was always, every comment section, every trailer, you know, be like, oh, it's the movie about the Bothans, and everyone, there was always someone replying, like, it's not that one, it's the other one, the, the fucking second Death Star, what is wrong with you? Uh, so we can't have a Rogue, the people on the internet who are like, can we get Rogue One 2, the answer is, nah. I Why mean, would they there already, be a Rogue One? They already did necessary. Rogue Two. Rogue Two is in end of end of the Jedi. Uh, Empire Strikes Back. Again. End of the Jedi. That's true. End, <laughs> the end of the Jedi. Jedi. The end of that the Jedi. That's the a, alternate that's name of this of reworked name. Yeah. I just think Rogue I, that whole thing about Rogue One Two is terrible. Like, do, do they not watch the end of Rogue One and be like, oh, can't really, can't really do anything all here? Oh, yeah. No. You think so, but. Uh, next thing I write down is Ewoks are good. I won't hear otherwise, and that's why they should no. show up in Return of Shut the Hell Up. That's why they should show up in Re- Return uh, Rise of Skywalker. You were going to say Return of the Skywalker. Yeah, well, uh, Return of <laughs> Skywalker, <laughs> Return Rise of the Millions of Dread, whatever they're called. No, Ewoks are great. I won't hear otherwise. Um, Ewoks or Pogs? Pogs. But yep, Ewoks, so are still Ewoks great. will get massacred now. No. <laughs> I liked, you know, that shot of the uh, Ewok dying um, after that explosion. Like it, and it, it yeah, they, they all crash onto the ground, and the other yeah. one's like, "Come on, mate!" Like goes to grab grab them, and but they won't get up. I, I, yeah. I do like that scene because it shows, like, it adds uh, humanity to the Ewoks. I like of, to I think that's the first time it's ever seen death. Like these are I mean, kind possibly these, you these, these Ewoks. These Ewoks don't age. And they no, never. Well, they, they definitely age. They show a baby when they're at the village. They show they a baby. Show a baby like, and to an the extent. chief seems really old. Yeah, they could be like ancient beings, like Yoda esque. Live forever. Possibly. Possibly. And that's the first time he's ever seen someone die. Possibly. It's a Traumatic. sad scene. Yeah. He goes to grab it. He's like, come on. Come, come on. on. Why aren't you but moving? They won't. they won't. They won't move. And he's like, damn, damn, it's a I real need to war wait scene. Here until you wake up. Because. This is the thing. This is opportune time for you to fall asleep. If you change the Ewoks to two, like, humans, all of a sudden that scene becomes, like, really fucked up. <laughs> you know, like, they go to grab their friend and, like, oh, no, no. Like, it seems like it's, it's a scene from a legit, like, Steven Spielberg war movie or something. But because it's two teddy bears, it's, like, people don't get the same <laughs> feelings, I guess. Or it, it's dealt back a little bit. <laughs> yeah, because they're teddy bears. But also, I, I, watching this again, I, I love how Carrie Fisher, how good Carrie Fisher is uh, acting with um, Wicket and stuff, like... She's just like, you can tell that like Leia as a character is like, this thing's kind of adorable, but then she's like unsure of it at the same time. What about like the first first time she meets Wicket? I, I really enjoy that scene the first time she meets Wicket. I think it's good. Carrie's, Carrie's really good in this movie, I think as well. I think this is the best movie that she's in, acting wise. Probably. Um, well, I think she's probably better in like the original trilogy, uh, I'd say. 
Because then I'm like, oh, she's so good in Last Jedi. Well, even in the... She doesn't get a lot to do in the last couple of movies. She has a lot in The Last Jedi, though. I would say Last Jedi is probably like like her best performance in all of the Star Wars movies. I'd put this as second. We'll get to it when we get to it. (laughs) Okay. Okay. Fair enough. We'll we'll skip in here. Let's skip in here. Next thing I wrote down is, Luke never goes to Vader to have some massive showdown and fight. He goes to turn... Uh, turn himself in and save his father. His actions aren't of- uh, offensive. He says his father will have to kill him after he says it's too late for him. And then, uh, just like to tie it back into this, to tie all this Luke stuff in together, Luke come when they actually get down to the fight, when he starts dueling Vader, Luke comes out swinging as he gets so, gets cl- so close to the dark side for the first time. Ryan Johnson recently confirmed a theory online that the shot of Luke thinking about striking down Ben in The Last Jedi was made to mirror Luke having a moment of clarity in this film as well. Luke has struggled with his dark side a lot, which is why that time against Ben uh, against Ben sends him into hiding. He fears the dark side within him because it's the second time. What could be Isn't there like time. you can just mirror the shot? Like you can just put the one shot into the other and they fit <laughs> yeah. into each other? Yeah, Someone... they did like a merge or no, like a... Yeah. Yeah, yeah it's, on tw- it's on Twitter... Um, a dissolve. You, it's a, yeah. At Heather Campbell uh, tweeted it, um, but they got it from Reddit. Obviously, I don't know who did it on Reddit, but yeah, the, the, I never realized this either until I saw the shot. But it was like when when you see the merge, it is like holy shit! That is literally the exact same shot. And then these people are having threads. Uh, this person at Andrew N W Folk or something said, "The Last Jedi is the best Star Wars." And then someone replies and says, as much as I like the thought of it, it seems pretty far far of a stretch. Low angles like those are textbook framing device to portray power as the viewer is placed under them. I'd believe it if Ryan said so, though. And then the person who replies again and says, true, true, even if it's not intentional, I love that fans are looking into this stuff. And then they tag Ryan Johnson, and then Ryan Johnson actually replies and says, you're right that some of these parallels are just... Uh, it's a close-up of the same character, but this one was very intentional. It's why I had him look down at his mechanical hand holding the saber. So, I know we're not talking about The Last Jedi, but I felt it was better to tie it in here, basically. And I think it works so well. Like, because this yeah. is the two times that we know of in Star Wars where Luke has had these, like, very close to the edge of, like, dark side moments. And they, Ryan Johnson literally just mirrors the exact same shot from uh, Jedi. And it's, it is perfect mirroring. It, even Mark Hamill's face, like, is the exact same basically yeah. with a beard obviously yeah, they'll, lose now, the fa- is- they'll lose the weight in his face so his face could be the same size <laughs> well, yeah i mean yeah it's no it's it, it, it's really really good and then it just like buys into it. it's like luke's head luke's mind here when he's he's like nearly gonna strike down his own father and you know he's going ham. and th- that's the thing about this fight against vader compared to his fight with him in empire those two aren't really trying to kill them either e- each other in that fight properly i don't think that's the thing like luke I, luke isn't like strong enough or believe in himself enough when he goes into that fight like he doesn't have the confidence and he's basically on a defensive the entire time like uh, vader's obviously just kicking his ass and i don't believe vader is ever trying to kill him in that fight and luke says as much obviously in this movie he's like you, you didn't kill me because you, you wouldn't be able to blah 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 uh but in in the duel in this movie whenever luke's just coming out he's like fucking yeah, he is going to town like with the full force and kicking Vader's ass left, left, right, and center well, all over the place. Like, I mean, he's wanting to disarm him, like pun intended. Yeah, but like the way he the way he fights is just aggressive. You know what I mean? Like he's he's it throwing does with, Vader. Uh, yeah, but he's not going to like. Uh, you, you can feel the anger in that fight. I feel just the way he's like, especially when he gets when he chops Vader's hand off. You know that that one scene there. You can really just feel the aggressiveness of it because you have. Luke like he's like whack 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 and then eventually like cuts his hand off it like it comes across very aggressive it's like a you know you like someone cutting some into a, behind cutting have into you, a tree have you chopped a hand off before they're very difficult yeah I pressed L2 once in a game and it did it so I don't know I think that counts for a lot <laughs> but yeah I, I um it's like the, there's a moment there and they have this shot of Luke realizing how close he is becoming uh, so close to getting to the dark side and then obviously in, in The Last Jedi they do the exact same shot again to represent how um, he's feeling there, and I, I know we're not, not talking about the Last Jedi, but it, I, I really just think it adds to a lot to Luke as a character. That he has these two defining moments where he got so close to the dark side, 
And I, I feel like when we get to Last Jedi, it's like kind of worth keeping in mind that the, the reason he puts himself in seclusion is because he's literally just afraid of himself from literally what he nearly did to his own father in this movie and then from what he nearly does to uh, his own family in another movie. Like it's, it's He's afraid of himself and what he knows is inside him, which is he knows that his father is with, with inside him. <clears throat> um, next thing I write down is <laughs> I just write down and there old Palps falls to his frozen the bith and a throne <laughs> because of course this time watching the movie unlike the last time I watched it you're watching him fall down that hole and it's like you know there's not going to be any clues there like they, they haven't digitally gone back and changed the movie on my blu-ray disc but my brain without even like being able to help it is like watching that scene like you know, like it's looking for clues that aren't going to be there kind of this thing. This is you know the I mean? only thing throughout this whole podcast series I've said, you know, having all this other knowledge now, Clone Wars is so great and having all the theories now we have. A, this is the only thing that has been possibly ruined by that knowledge because I watch and I watch him fall and I think, you know what? Something happened in The Last Jedi that could happen here. And then I get this image of Emperor Palpatine flying through space as he goes in his cloak, just like rippling behind him, flying away as he like falls out, you know, like if Leia could do it and she doesn't know how to use the force, Palps is like rocket man. He's just Superman. He flies off, lands on a ship and see you later. Takes him out of commission for a bit. I don't think that's it because it does all explode (laughs) as he goes down. So I, 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 the I force also protected him. They kept him warm down the cold. Yeah, maybe. When when I watched the scene this time, I literally like uh, at the moment until I get proved proven otherwise when the movie comes out. Of course, is that I am picturing him dying and then like his essence or basically some fucking Voldemort shit breaking out and going to hide in another body. You know what I mean? Maybe like, he's got a clone. No, they can't do the clone shit because that's what they did in the original. Books. Well, I think we talked about Ray being a clone. So why couldn't Palpatine have a clone that he transfers his essence to? Because they've done it before, and I feel like that that's just like up hurling a bunch of rocks that they don't want to. You know, they they try so hard to be like, we've got oh, a new because they've never canon. they've never redone something they've done before. They've How many Death Stars do they make? <laughs> they've reused stuff, but I think redoing the whole Palpatine has a clone storyline would just be then at that point people will start being like why the fuck didn't you just make those books then you know because a lot of the the star wars i say quote unquote fanboys even though i don't think they're fans because they just basically hate everything but the, the the people who hate the new movies and all that sort of stuff and the new books and whatever else the thing they're always on about is why couldn't they just make like the Thrawn trilogy and all this all this shit so the second you start doing stuff like having palpatine be a clone then you're literally giving those people ammo for their guns you know so that he was a clone in the expanded the legacy yes that's what i'm saying that he was a clone in those books that was like the first that's literally what i was just making a joke so (laughs) no they literally that is what happens in those books palpatine has a clone and then they have to fight palpatine again because he has a clone it's very silly but that's what happens. And that's why those stories are now called Legacy. <laughs> <laughs> no longer canon. <laughs> there was also like Palpubots. Yeah. Robots of Palpatine. Just bring well, the, it all back. There are robot, robot Palpatine things in canon that exist. But they're not like sentient. They're just like... They're just like robots that have his hologram face on them. They... I don't know. Anyway, maybe it's a Palpatine from an alternate Earth or universe. The other thing to take into account, because we're going to spend a lot of time just, of course, believing that Palpatine's actually back. I'm like, I, I, I'm 99 percent there because you know it's in all the promotional material, the poster. They really want you to believe Palpatine's back. But all, all I'm saying is, I still am leaving a little bit of my brain ready for that rug to be pulled out from under me and them tr- trick us completely and say he's not actually back yeah maybe like, he's just he just uh, provided the voice for a droid you know or well, something he was I just don't... a real big fan of voice acting he's like can i ask right what's his what's his face going to look what do you think palpatine's face is going to look like because his face in revenge of the sith is fucking terrible 
I think like, it'll just look exactly. It'll it'll look just it'll just be Palpatine face. They're, they're not gonna be like, oh, we'll make it more scarred and messed up. I feel like Palpatine just has a look. They stick to it. They can give him a different color fucking cloak. I guess I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like just his face is just his face is the thing because in I feel like well we we barely see him in the old movies but he looked reasonably normal but like the end of Revenge of the Sith he's just like he looks like he's been stung by a bee. Well, he has. He was force lightning bee. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell! The ultimate bee. Ultimate bee force lightning. Uh, <laughs> uh, Han's face when he finds out Luke is the brother and he thinks back to Hoth. I always find that funny. That's just like a meme in itself. When Leia's like, he's my brother. And then Han just does the, I mean, it's audio podcast, but it's hard to, but you can see he's like brain ticking over like, oh, like, <laughs> and it doesn't get boring to watch. Like, every single, I swear we could do this show every single year and I'd write down the exact same note, which is Han's face. Um, and then the last thing I wrote down is watching the final moments of Jedi. It just makes me wonder how, Rise of Skywalker. Oh my god, my brain. Wonder how Rise of Skywalker will end now even more. For so long, it was like this is the the end, the stop of the, the stop of everything. Uh, and then we've we've known that Episode Nine was coming for some time, but it's like, even though we watched this, of course, I've watched this before uh, Force Awakens came out. I've watched this movie before Last Jedi came out. But I think it's just what rewatching it this time, knowing that I'm about to go watch in a month's yeah, time a new end. Uh, a new end that I'm I'm paying more attention to the actual end of this movie than I have the last few rewatches I've done for it because I'm like this movie just ends and it's like everything's happy go lucky and fireworks and you know like they're together like yay force goes over here you know like it, it just has a very cheery end. Um, oh, Revenge of the Sith, which was the last the last time we thought. Everyone thought there was going to be a the end to a trilogy for a Star Wars movie. The end of that movie is very somber, you know, obviously, where it's like it doesn't have a happy, cheery ending because it's not a happy, cheery movie. So now I'm like, okay, so how does this one end? Are they going to do some like hip hip hooray? I, I don't I'll think they're going to do ends. that. But no, sh- don't. All right, go ahead. You tell me. What it's going to end with Force Ghost, Yoda, <laughs> Luke Skywalker, Anakin Skywalker, Snoke, and Palpatine all holding hands. <laughs> As Ray and Ben get married, yep, and yeah, called it, <laughs> <laughs> called it. <laughs> well, I've always had a theory, and I think the ending of this movie feels really good. It's full of hope, and there's so much left for the mo- for the world onwards. Like it doesn't feel like. That is the end of the world we know as we know it. Like some stories that you tell where the end happens and you're like, cool, that is all that happens in that world. Nothing I don't get the feeling that any life continues on in that universe. Um but this one, you know, you get the feeling you're like, okay, Luke's gonna go and start a new leaf and start the Jedi again and, and start rebuilding. But then it also it, this whole movie brings me back to the the whole notion of balance in the force where i think this last movie is leading to because i think the th- the prequel trilogy ends with the darkest possible point with the dark side of the force being over overpowered and unbalanced in a way like it's so gr- much greater than the light side of the force you come to the end of this movie and just in the same way the light side of the force is overpowered to what was dark now. It, it's, it comes off as the light side of the force is so much stronger. It might not be. There's still a lot of Empire, but they've, they've got rid of like the most the major parts of that dark side of the force now. I mean, a lot there's of the, one Jedi to zero Sith, so you could either view that the as whole, infinitely more powerful the outlook or on the more outlook, powerful. The outlook on human... But I'm not talking about the forces in just about Sith and just, just about Sith and... Jedi, I'm talking about the forces in like the balance of the of life as they know it. So there's so much hope now in the universe. There's so much everything is now overbalanced in the way of the good, where it's like, okay, so of course it was gonna come back around to being bad. Of course there was gonna be something bad come back. I feel like the end of this ninth movie is something where the world just seems to be in balance. Where it's well, not a perfect finish one way or the other. I understand what you're saying, but 
I, I don't think the movie should be like, and we have a Sith and a Jedi and everything's good now. No, like, not a Sith Eternal. and a Jedi, but like not everything being perfect and everything being like, you know, this I'm, movie finishes off like everything's perfect and everything's so yeah, great. Yeah, yeah. Everybody but, dies. But <laughs> but the thing, like, uh, to touch on the, the perfect ending thing quickly is the, the thing that I always love that they've done with the extended universe material, like the Disney, the Disney books did straight away as soon as they got the license with like the aftermath trilogy and stuff is they did something that makes so much sense. And they can, you're going to see this in the Mandalorian series where it's like, realistically, the end of this movie doesn't make any sense. Like they, they take down the Death Star. They, they sure they kill the emperor. They kill Darth Vader, but it's like, okay, but you've got all of these like politician types and whatever else, like still sanctioned in so many different uh, parts of the galaxy like are they just hanging up their capes because the emperor's dead you know what i mean like i like how they they kind of cover that in the the books and stuff because that they, they wouldn't just they wouldn't all just step down just because the emperor died all of a sudden um and then with the how the new one will end i think the i think the big difference there is, is just going to come down to ray because the problem with luke as like uh, as the last jedi shows us is that luke doesn't he never see. He never has time. Like he, he aspires. He's like Obi Wan Kenobi, Ben Kenobi. That's who he aspires to be. He meets Yoda. He's like this Jedi Master. Like all these people. So then, what's he gonna do? There's what two people does he, do he knew this? for less than a day. Basically, but then it's like following this. What's he do? He goes off and he literally starts to try and make the Jedi Order again, and literally just start the whole process again. But then, as we know from watching the prequels, the Jedi did a million and one things f- fucking wrong. And mm-hmm. <laughs> like the, a million and one mistakes, Yoda himself made a million and one mistakes, and mm-hmm. Luke literally tries to restart that again for some reason. It's because he doesn't know better. And I think the thing with Ray is is that Ray, by the time we end, reach the end of her movie and her her trilogy, it's like she's going to come out the other end not being like Luke. She's not going to be like, okay, I will literally just try and restart the Jedi Order because that's what I feel like I'm kind of obligated to do. She's going to have to do something different and i feel like that's what breaks the uh ever looping break the cycle like break the cycle and that's that that you know what that sums up what i want for the next movie better than how i articulated it in a way that she's not just following the same rotation of one minute the jedi are powerful the next minute the sith are the powerful like it seems to just go back and forth throughout the history of star wars whereas we're getting to that point where somebody's going to break that cycle and is going to start something anew that fixes everything. Yeah. I feel like you can end the movie and she's like, I'm a Jedi and I'm going to go about like continuing the, uh, some, something of the Jedi ways. But at the same time, she's like, but I'm literally not trying to mimic their shit. You know, it's like, I, I I'm carrying the Jedi moniker and kind of like, like one percent of the Jedi ways, but I'm ditching like all of their shitty rules and you know all these things and like starting again. Whereas Luke was like, "I'm gonna keep all the rules, including I'll never have children and everything." Like he, it was very much, "I buy into this religion." Hello, door knocker. Yes, yeah, sign me up. You know, like off I go <laughs> to be a merry Jedi. That's what I need to do with my life. I feel like Ray has to be the yeah. Ray has to be the one that breaks that. She's like, "Yeah, I'm Jedi." Version two. But We're doing things different this time. <laughs> I'd like them to. I I wouldn't be against the her dropping the word Jedi. Well, that's where the Skywalker rumor yeah. thing comes from. I yeah. am the first of the Skywalkers. We will now be known as Skywalkers, and it's like a new moniker. I'm not against a new moniker either. I just think the only the only reason I think they wouldn't do that is just because Jedi is like so obviously yes, so and known and yeah, it's like yeah. marketing wise marketing wise and all that sort of stuff yeah it's just like becomes a and, and, and then it's like you shouldn't be thinking about that because it's like story wise if they want to have a new moniker they should have a new moniker and they should do that for the story but then it's hard not to think about star wars because it's such a big property that you just know that someone would be like hey no like that makes our job harder for like selling toys later you know like <laughs> all these people writing jedis jedi is their religion and the Australian censuses, they're going to have to write Skywalker now? Come on, we can't do that. Mm-hmm. Get the hell out of here. Sure, that, yeah. <laughs> the box isn't big enough. That's true. That's the main reason why I should never change the thing, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell, Ashley. Um, all right, so let's get down to it. Let's start with you, Ashley. Mm. Where? Get the disappointment out of the way quick. Where would you like you tell me where you want to put it and I'll put it there and then 
We'll see how we go. I think I'm going to put this one at number five. Number five. So that would be moving Empire up, Rogue One up, and then this is going to sit directly above um, Solo for you. Yeah. Yeah? Very close. Very cl- oh, okay. Kieran. <laughs> <laughs> I'll, I'll read everyone's uh, full things in a moment, of course, everyone listening. <coughs> Karen, where do you want to put um, this? I think this was the hardest decision of the series so far. Mm-hmm. And it might just be the hardest decision because I think whatever I pick now is going to be my number one by the end. Okay, interesting. And I, I think, because I don't think Force so, Awakens so, or... Do you think putting the next two movies are going to be easy to rank? You're just going to be like, ah, slot them in here, slot them in there. Yeah, I think they're going to be easier because I know I know neither of them are my favorite Star Wars movie. Okay. I, I, lo- I, I love Last Jedi, but at the same time, I very knowingly acknowledge a lot of the problems with The Last Jedi. Like there are, you know, Canto Blight is a very... It's a, very, if, it's a thing I wish just didn't happen. What <laughs> if Rise of Skywalker's... Town. What if Rise of Skywalker is the best Star Wars movie? Uh, it might be, but I won't know this time. <laughs> like, I won't know that for another year or no, two. No, you've like, called that's, it. <laughs> <laughs> As in, like, this is, you know, this will be the number one. Um, so I didn't make my decision until midway through us recording <laughs> this because I've been going back and forth between the two the entire time. Um, but I'm going to put this at number three. I'm going to put return number three just because I don't think I I do have problems with it. I do have problems with it and I love Rogue One with a passion, but I think for what we used to have for the original Star Wars trilogy, this was such a great ending to the trilogy. Like this was, this was like George Lucas with this movie actually did something right in many ways. Like, he could have very easily fucked up this ending. And there have been so many trilogies where the ending. Some would argue he did. Somebody, some would argue that he did. With one think- special effects shot. <laughs> well, yeah. Um, but, no, I think this this is a, a very good ending. To, even if we never got the sequel trilogy and this was the official end of Star Wars, I would be very happy with it. So, yeah. I find it interesting you, pu- you put it at your current top spot after saying you didn't sound so hot on it at the at the start i didn't sound so hot on it and 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 you swayed like, him dylan I do, swayed yeah, him I, with your it's my no job. it wasn't <laughs> it was like i do think the the start of this movie does drag like i i do i still have my problems with it but i think as an overall package and an overall movie and to what it is as the star wars for star wars I think that puts it above Rogue One. If I was going to rank this on what is the better movie, I'd put Rogue One there. No, we're not doing those lists. Those lists yeah, they're, they're completely preference. different lists. Yeah, it's, it's if you don't, if if people don't understand the difference between like j- just rank what your fa- the the definition of favorite doesn't mean you think that something is particularly like a ten out of ten best made thing. It just means that you like watching it. You know, like this sort of thing. Um, I'm putting this at number three for myself as well. This, that's what I was saying. I didn't want to give it away too early, but it was hard not to. Um, it I've was very said, obvious that you were yeah. holding back. <laughs> I've, I've always said that Jedi is my favorite Star Wars movie. And I think that just comes back to when I watched it when I was a lot younger. And like, this was the one that like clicked for, for me the most. Like, obviously it has like the most lightsaber stuff in it. The most like forcey mystical stuff you got the emperor you've got fucking all this you know like crazy stuff happening um for whatever reason it was like always the one that clicked with me the most and it's the one where you you finally see luke being badass i guess you know so yeah do stuff so i I guess as a kid it's like it was the most impressive one to watch um i think empire as a kid is like probably the the most boring because it's like it's monotonous it doesn't have much flashy shit going on yeah it's it's very world building and, and kind of like tensely paced, so that comes off as a bit slow. It's yeah, it's yeah. I get that. Uh, so the official rankings as of this episode are: Kieran, Attack of the Clones, The Phantom Menace, Solo, A New Hope, Revenge of the Sith, Empire Strikes Back, Rogue One, Return of the Jedi, Ash, Attack of the Clones, The Phantom Menace, A New Hope, 
Revenge of the Sith, Solo, Jedi, Rogue One, Empire. Myself, Attack of the Clones, Solo, The Phantom Menace, New Hope, Empire, Revenge of the Sith, Rogue One, and then Jedi. So I, f- I feel like this, this was asking before though, the thing, because like, going into the next two weeks, I'm like, I, I have a rough idea, but as I said, I've never officially ranked Star Wars movies until we've done this podcast. And I pretty much never fully decide on where I'm putting something until like, I'm about to sit down and do this or like as we're doing the show. And then I commit to it because I can never like stick something. But that's like part of the fun of doing the show is it's making me just kind of have to commit to <laughs> mm. um, rankings of certain things, which I never really liked to do before. Um, so that's where we're at now. But yeah, I'm not like looking at it. I'm like, oh, Force Awakens there, uh, Last Jedi there. Like I, I, it's going to be, um, I think it's going to be interesting. And as much as you may want to, like here's the, so when we get to Last Jedi and we put that down, I'll be like, I'll, I'll, I'll feel very comfortable with how that looks, I think. But we are going to put, rise of skywalker here somewhere and i think all of us can put like a little asterisk on it and say that like wherever this is is probably going to change place like if you ask it's me, a like, tempered even... thing it's like it's, yeah we haven't ruminated on it we haven't dwelled on it like even for me 12 months ago jedi wouldn't be at the top of my list like 12 months ago jedi just wouldn't be there but i think so much for me has changed in my understanding of star wars and my appreciation for star wars that it makes jedi better well, yeah, a, a lot of my list um, and the positions of stuff it has always changed thanks to extended universe stuff, be mm-hmm. that the TV shows or the books, the comics or what have you. Like the the reason Revenge of the Sith is so high on my list is because of the Clone Wars. And I said that in that thing. That's a, that's the thing. Like I know people shit on all the prequels and they think that, you know, all of the movies are bad and I'm like, whatever, I don't care. The reason Revenge of the Sith is so high to me is because, as I said, when we talked about it, I watched that movie kind of like it's the season finale of like seven, eight seasons or however you want to place it. It would be like the eighth season, I guess, technically um, of this TV show. You know what I mean? Like that's how I watch it now. So uh, it's like, what do I think we're not ranking this on what we actually think is the best movie. Um, all right. So that'll be it for this week's episode of Old Rain Explosion. Next week we'll be discussing the force awakens um it's kind of scary and exciting that that's what we're watching next week because it means we're into the so new stuff close yeah it's like oh mm. my goodness gracious me <laughs> um there, there will be there is an episode in between uh force and uh last jedi um there is a, like a break hopefully. there but even then the, <laughs> hopefully even then there's still the fact that we're going to the next movie i'm watching uh, next Star Wars movie I'm watching is The Force Awakens. I'm like, holy shit, we're getting so close. Uh, don't forget, please watch this, uh, share the show around on social media if you'd like. Tag Explosion Pod um, and tell us if you're enjoying it. You can rate on Apple Podcasts or Podchaser. Or doing Explosion is a Darth production of ExplosionNetwork.com, which is where you can also find what do you want to watch a fortnightly movie and TV podcast. You can follow me on Twitter at Vivaladil, V-I-V-A-L-A-D-I-L. You can follow Ash on Twitter at Ashley Hobby, A-S-H-L-E-Y-H-O-B-L-E-Y. Follow Kieran on Twitter at Yeah, boy, Ringo, and may the force be with you, always.